secured. So you don't need a lot. Um, so I do a line. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make chick neck tables. These things are super cute. They can be used in a variety of ways um, and you can customize them how you want. Another really great thing about them is if you are getting into using power tools and kind of this type of crafting or carpentry, it's a great way to test your skills, to get really comfortable with a tape measure and making all types of different cuts as you're going through and doing this. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's gonna be really simple and I will share the dimensions down below along with some instructions so you can go through and do this yourself. Some of what I'm gonna discuss is gonna be optional and personal preference, but I go ahead and I buy furring strips. So these are large, I think they're 10 or eight feet, probably eight feet. Uh, that looks like 10 feet. Um, so they're large and what I do is I buy them from the store and when you get them they're usually really rough. So I go ahead and I pre-sand all of my furring strips before I cut them. This does take a minute. Um, I have a little sander that I use. So I do use this little sander. Um, it works really well. It does take a minute but this way you just get that nice finished look. Um, if you look at this one, it does have square. It's very square. Um, so when I'm sanding, I actually bevel the edges. So I just give them a nice little round edge to give them a cleaner look. Um, personal preference again, but I do recommend sanding them. It just makes them look a lot nicer. So once you have them sanded and you have your furring strips, it's gonna be time to start cutting. I do use a circular saw when I'm cutting and the measurements are gonna be really important when doing this. So let me go over there. Here's the circular saw I'm going to be using. The first thing I always do, because I do wear glasses, and I when you cut stuff like this furring wood, I think it's made out of pine, it creates a lot of cuttings, and they get all in the air. So I actually do wear safety goggles, and then just because I don't want to breathe it in, I do cover my face. So this is really important um, in the sense of it sucks when you get the wood chips in your eyes. So you're gonna wanna find a method that works best for you. Now we're gonna bring it over and we're just gonna start cutting. All right, so I have my tape measure and it also depends on how you cut. So I, uh, I always cut on this side. So the piece of wood that I will be using is on this side of my saw um, with the handle that's right up here. It's kind of hard to see where you're cutting on this side. So I always cut on this side. Um, so I'll measure and the first piece that I'm gonna be cutting is gonna be one of our, my 13 inch pieces. So I will just measure. I will mark it on both sides so I know where I'm cutting. Now you'll notice here's our mark. What I do, not touching the trigger, is I go ahead and I bring down the saw and I line it up and I'll show you in just a second. So now I have it lined up. I'm going to pull this little thing around for a minute and just hold that there and I will show you what I do. Okay, so you can see my line right there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up to where my blade is just on the opposite side of it, because this piece I want to measure 13 exactly, so I'm going to cut just before the line, because if I cut on the line, it's going to rip off about an eighth of an inch, so that's something to keep in mind as you're going through and cutting these. And it doesn't matter, just be consistent. So if you cut on this side of the line or the other side of the line, cut all of your pieces that way. That's the big thing. Don't change how you're cutting um, during your project. Okay, um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just pre-cut all the wood so we can start building the chick neck table. Now this is everything that I use to build my chick neck tables. I use wood glue to, I didn't use this at first, but now I use wood glue because this adds a bit more, I feel, stability to the project. Next, I use a nail gun. So I'm really lucky and do have a lot of tools. However, this is something you can totally do with like nails and a hammer. Um, it'd require a little bit of a steady hand, but you could also use screws if you want it. Like use what you have. You can be a little open. Um, the nail gun, the uh, nails that I do use are going to be the one and one fourth if you are looking for them. So we're just going to get started and going to assemble this. All right, so to get started, you're going to take four 
of the 12 inch boards and you're just gonna put a little bit of wood glue. You don't need a lot unless you're building it completely out of wood glue, which is totally feasible. So I take my four pieces and I tip them to where, oops, I guess I didn't need wood glue on this one, but it's fine. And we're gonna take and we're going to slide these four together. Now to help make sure that I'm getting it flush, you can grab two of the other pieces and that helps snap it right on together. I do run my finger over and remove the excess. Now what you can do is, I wasn't particular, but you could figure out what side you want to be the top and what side you want to be the bottom. So this side is a little bit more rougher, so I'm going to have this be the bottom. Now you take your smaller pieces. And this part can be a little tricky and is a bit harder. So when you have these pieces, what you're wanting to do is make sure you have enough room to put the legs in. So what I do is I still use my two woods. So I go like this and then I line it up. All right, so I have this all nice and lined up and it's gonna be really simple. It is one, two, three, four. And then over here, we're gonna do the same thing. One, two, three, four. And now this is gonna happen. You're gonna have some that end up pointing out and they're really easy to get out. You just, you can grab a pair of pliers or whatever you have close to. Right now I have scissors and I am just going to wrap it and roll it out. That happens a lot. So then you re-grab it and boom, that works. All right, so now we are gonna go ahead and make the top. What I do is I take my pieces. I do put a little bit of wood glue on this part to make it a little sticky to help it hold a bit better. Again, the wood glue is completely optional if you're using like screws or as I am a nail gun, but I like the way it just makes it a bit more secured. So now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna line it up where I want it and then just one. Oh, and that one didn't go in the way I wanted it. And we're gonna take our next one. Now we're going to do the other side and you're going to line it up and pull the trigger again. Line it up. And this does happen where the nails don't go in all the way. So I just go as I did with the other one and I pull them out or you can grab a hammer. You take a hammer and you just... Get them flush. I don't like the way that looks. And then we're gonna take, and that other one is secure. So now we're gonna grab our top. And we're gonna take and put the top on. Well, this is the bottom, and we're putting it onto the top. Now you're gonna grab your nail gun, and you're gonna go nail crazy. This is helping to make sure it is completely secured. I go overboard. So now we have the bowl, which looks beautiful. And now we're gonna start to put these legs on. The legs can be tricky, I'm not gonna lie. They are the hardest part, for me at least. Um, so I put a little bit of wood glue, a little bit of wood glue, and then 
I line them up with the line that's on here and now I'm going to put a nail on this side over here. And I take it and I go one, two, three. And then just for good measure, I do one more right here. And take the hammer. Little bit of wood glue. Put it on there. And as you can see, this is why I don't like doing this one. I'm gonna take it, put it on there. Now we're gonna flip it and do the other side. Wood glue. So we got a little bit of wood glue on there. I'm gonna take and put it on here. Now we have our legs and we need to do the bench part. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put on the bench part. And what I've discovered is about four and a half inches down or four and a quarter, as long as this is at the four and a quarter mark. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. That should give me enough. So, uh, no, a little too much on that side, so four, Is great that's right where I want it so I'm just gonna go oops back over here take and go just so they don't poke out any. Now we're going to do the other side. All right so I do put a piece of wood under here when I am working to make it so it doesn't wobble on me. We're going to measure this to four and a quarter. Four and a quarter and we just take a piece of wood. That one's going to fit. That one, uh, need to come this way just a little. But now we have to double check that we're still at four and a quarter. 
Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Perfect. So we're just going to take it and go one, two, and now we have the bench part working. So now we're going to install the leg, the seat. And I get mine flush. One. Come over the top. Two. I'm gonna come and do the next side. One. Two. And now you have your chick neck table. If you want to get a little fancy, there are some other things you can do, and I will show you those now. So when you look, you'll notice there's kind of divots, and I'm going to attempt to cover these up, and I'll show you how I do that. So earlier when I mentioned kind of pre-sanding everything, I save some of the sanding so it matches the wood color. And what? Because I don't have enough space. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take some wood glue. I just used some scrap mail. Put some wood glue. And then you're going to take and mix in some of your shavings. You're going to stir it together. I do use my finger. It's going to get kind of like a putty consistency. You don't want it to be like um, actual wood glue consistency. All right, I think that's pretty good. So what I do is I get a little bit on my finger and I take it on where a mark is. So right here we have an indent and I take and I go like this because we can sand that. So then I clean it up and then I'm going to sand that down. I'm going to do the same over here. Now I will have to go back over and sand all this once it dries, but that's a great way to hide those imperfections. Now you have a few more options you can do. You can paint it, you can oil it. It's completely your choice on what you do. But now you have yourself a really cute little checknik table. I hope you enjoyed and I'm hoping to do more of these how-to type videos. Really quickly, I just thought of something that kept happening. When I first started building these and I would set them down on the ground, they'd be like wonky. So what you can do is take a sander, sandpaper, and just sand down the leg. So whatever leg, like this side's sitting a little high, it's making it wonky, I can go ahead and just shave down this leg until it's not wonky anymore. Your project's not a complete loss. Hope you enjoyed that tip and have a great day. Uh -huh.